Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, as I always say, if this is your first time here, I surely appreciate your support and welcome to the channel. Be sure to uh, like, share, and subscribe the content. Uh, we're all, I do this for all like-minded folks just like you and I, trying to help each and every one of us uh, get to the finish line. I'm just the uh, blessed one to be able to do this for a full-time living. So welcome to the channel, guys. Come along with me today. It's day two out here on the uh, on the farm couple days apart getting uh, cameras pulled and going over sign and and uh, getting ready for the habitat season today's topic we're going to talk about guys is switchgrass today guys what we're going to talk about is this um, we are going to talk about switchgrass now you can see this is a uh, this is a second year switchgrass. I planted this um, the first fall I was here, and then actually I guess you could say um, I I interseeded it last year as well. And and for that uh, th that kind of you know brings us to the topic today, guys. Um, the reason switchgrass fails. Let's just start there. The reason switchgrass fails is because folks aren't patient with it. Um, this here is a perfect example. Uh, it has, it's got a lot, you see a lot of the broom sedge around here. The Johnson grass is notorious here in Kentucky. And, you know, it took over. So the first time I did it, I was like, man, I don't know if I just wasted a bunch of money or not. And, and I mean, this is, this is a product that I, you know, use and recommend and see every day in my career. I still got a little frustrated with it. So point number one, be patient with it, guys, because as you can see, and this is knocked down, I mean, we haven't had any major snow on it. Uh, but this stuff was, you know, just high when, um, you know, when we were here, let's say, uh, before the rains, big rains and stuff hit before our gun season here in Kentucky. Uh, this is actually, I'm standing right here is where my nephew, uh, my nephew's buck actually um, bailed over the hill. He shot him right up, right up on top of the hill there at the Licking Branch. He come right down, run right down the mowed trail and, and bailed off right into here. So I'll show you some pictures there. But the reason I'm touching on that is this, guys. I think, I think that there's a there's a big myth out there uh, that switchgrass is a cure all, right? There's so many things that come with switchgrass. Like I've always said, guys, is some of the um, and, and I'm not taking any, anything from anybody. Don't get me wrong, I'm not that guy. But I think when you hear these buzzwords or you know these hot topics in the uh, you know these marketing terms uh, in the industry in any industry, not just the outdoor industry, but any industry, what you find is you get words that are easy to sell. You know, the product is easy to sell. Switchgrass is one of those because people want to densify their property. Now, one of the biggest things is, is this. You have, to, you have to be able to determine what your use is for the switchgrass. Are you planning it for a screen? If you're planning it for a screen, switchgrass has no food value to it, right? So you can use it. Uh, is it a height thing, you know, because switchgrass, a good a good stand to switch, you know, is going to be four, five, six feet tall. Six feet tall in most cases, hopefully, if your ground is good. But it takes you a couple of years to get there. If you're looking for screening, better screening that you can count on is Egyptian wheat. But moral of the story, is it screening for your access? Not screening for food plots, we'll touch on that. If it's screening for your access to get you in and out of the farm, don't put food with it. You know, and that goes for putting even sorghum in your, you know, Sudan sorghum grass because that sorghum head, they eat it. So I try to do guys is this. I try to make sure just knowing going into folk or helping folks determine just because it's switchgrass doesn't mean that you just plant it and you can walk past it. And, and there's so many things that come. So one screening, make sure if you're going to use it as your, your foot traffic, your screening in and out of the stand or farm, there's no there's no food value to it, right? So switchgrass and Egyptian wheat, if you're going to plant it alone, not in, in large volumes, if you're going to plant it alone, at least go 30, I say 20 feet, but I always like to say 30 feet wide because of the wind. It needs each, each other to stand up, uh, you know, to, to help each other stand up, right? Um, the switchgrass alone, the more you plant, the wider, the better it does. You can see here, guys, this is young, immature and some of it is knocked down. Well, like I said, before the, you know, we got the heavy rains and stuff, it was four or five feet tall. This year, it'll be a little more dense. It'll be a little taller. It'll, you know, it'll uh, stand up to the elements a little bit more. So second part of screening is this. 
screening around your food plots can have food in it because you're not walking past it. You shouldn't be walking past it, right? Uh, it's not to screen you into a box blind that shouldn't be on there. It's, it's not to screen you uh, to a tree stand that shouldn't be on there. It's to get you, give you a soft edge or break up a food plot to make that uh, plot feel stronger, you know, to, to feel more secure, I guess I should say, right, for the deer. So that can have that can have food in it. So your Egyptian wheat can also have Sudan sorghum. You got the, there's a lot of blends out there. Uh, one of them that is really good that I've seen all across the country is uh, John Comp's uh, Northwood Whitetails, that HD mix. A lot of folks use it because it's good, you know. So, uh, but what I find is I see a lot of guys that put switch, native grasses, Egyptian wheat, and try to use it as a screen and plant it six feet wide. And it's great for a little while, but it falls over. I've got two pieces of it here that I can attest to you that I didn't account for it being uh, the windy as it got and some of mine laid down. Now, luckily I started with 20 feet, so a lot of it's still on its feet, right, standing up. But uh, but I should have put it 30 feet, knowing, knowing darn well I should have. So switchgrass is this, guys. If you want, your switchgrass to be bedding, you have to have browse in it. If it's bedding, not screening, if it's bedding, then it offers thermal cover. You know, guys, this is where the myth comes in. Switchgrass is not bedding unless it has food or they will use switchgrass that does not have browse and doesn't have food in it if they're pressured. One of the perfect examples is, is the uh, state of Michigan. Um, higher higher pressure you get the better switchgrass bedding looks and why is that or acts why is that because they use it for security it's thick it's dense they know they can get away from people and it hides them you know six foot into it on a good mature stand of switchgrass they're gone they blend into it their color is the same you know a lot of times as that switch uh so that that myth there needs to be busted how do you promote switch if you want it to be stronger and that's exactly where we're here to right, we're here right here today guys so i have i have i'll show you this bottom this whole ridge system goes back actually towards the lodge i got food plots on that side of it a bunch of dough bedding that i started in here um we pulled some of the walnut out during the logging this year and i'm, I'm adding more bedding you can see it's it's you know it's got great density to it already but this time of the year when you go in and it's a little open. I'm going to add some bedding to it. That's one of the dough bedding areas I didn't get cut on the farm. You can see I got right here. A tree fell down across the transition, so that's good to find. But this mowed trail comes up, and where I'm at right here, guys, I'll turn you around this way. What I've got is this mowed trail behind me. This way goes up so it comes out of the transition, out of the timber, and it goes right up here, right on the edge, and it goes right up to, there's a shot plot right up on top. That's the uh, first encounter that I had with Atlas this year was on my shot plot and that whole top ridge, ridge top is a food plot. The end of it, the other end of it, where my nephew killed his buck over the, over in the other bottom where we'll walk to you today, that's where I killed Atlas. So what I'm saying is this guys, is where this bottom, this, this piece here is hidden all down below in this valley before it gets here and I'm putting switchgrass in here to densify this to give it thermal cover but I'm also making it into bedding so this year what I'm going to do is you can see this this is our main transition that goes up right here that connects the farm together this trail behind me that you can see they got mowed in goes right up goes over the hill comes right to the licking branch where my nephew Mac shot his buck right down in the bottom right to the water hole where I killed Atlas it's all hooked together but what you see as I've got it dense in here, and this year, what I'm doing is I'm gonna mow a trail up. There's three legs to this in here, and I'm gonna perforate this with pockets. In those pockets, I'm gonna mow up through here, break it into a couple pieces. It's all gonna come down, so it's just not willy-nilly, willy you know, checkerboard, let's say here, it all funnels down. I like to bring them into these points of impact. Um, this is actually gonna be, you know, Point of impact because there's a rifle blind going up above this an am rifle blind going in this year up above it above one of the stands i've already got there but in here guys perfect example there is no food value to that and there's no beds i just walked up here a little bit when i started sh shooting this there's no beds in it no food value to it right now come with me and i'll show you here let me flip you around give it guys where there's where this mode path is 
and there's brows right off the side of it. One bed, two beds, three beds, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's one pocketed right in there, eleven. I mean, they're all in there. What is it resourced to? It's got that backdrop that was pushed in from the old owner that when he cleared the trees 20 years ago, they're tucked up behind it. But brows, all of these beds have woody brows within reach. Goes to show you, bedding can be very strong if you got brows you know, in it. So are you planting switchgrass for bedding? Are you planting switchgrass for, for security cover? Are you, you know, planning it to add to the thermal cover? You put these pockets that I'm putting in here, guys, this year, the, the pockets, those pockets that I'm putting in will look just like this. Those pockets are going to have all of this regeneration in there. So what do you, over the years, so what do you, how do you do that, right? I'm going to get, I'm going to order a bunch of blackberry, uh, you know, uh, seeds. Uh, one of the great things I've had luck with guys doing in these situations is I've had, um, great luck getting the uh, trimmings on the town i've used to pick them up at my grandparents place <laughs> and bring them out and throw them into these areas and uh, like the whirly birds that you see the maple you know twirly birds that everybody has in town pine cones uh, any of that stuff that they pick up out of the town if you got somebody you know that's got walnut or whatever the case is go get a bunch of them seeds and uh, put them in those pockets and you know, let it explode and, and turn it into that. So when you want to promote the, that bedding, have have switch around it, have your thermal cover around it, have your have it promoted so your pockets are strong. You have to have food in order for switch to be bedding. Now, if you're just looking to densify a piece of the farm, uh, you know, for birds and everything else, you know, that's great too. But what I'm saying is guys, it's a huge myth that you plant switchgrass and it has bedding value galore and, and all the deer love it because it's just bedding, bedding, bedding. Switchgrass isn't bedding to the highest potential that it could be unless it has food, guys. So remember that, something I wanted to share with you. Uh, I think it's a huge overstep look from folks. But honestly, they just you just don't understand that, right? A lot of folks just have been told switchgrass, you plant it and they bed in it. Well, they will. If they're pressured into it but if you want a consistent bedding program out of it and you want a consistent high efficient so you know where the does are at it's adding to the value of what you designed or i helped you design um add brows to it add food to it not clover not rye not uh, anything like that brows woody brows meet their woody brows requirements in those beds then transfer them out to your food plots, guys, and your ag and your food plots. Uh, so, kind of see what it looks like from above here. We just started down there, so this whole deal will be pocketed in here, guys. Just a helpful tip on switchgrass. Like I said, I've always thought that for years to come. Everybody just latches onto the switchgrass thing and expects miracles. And it's a great product. Cave and rock. I plant a lot of cave and rock. You can see it's real strong up here. You can see where the the uh, broom sedge takes over a little bit, you get up here, and then this is all my uh, Egyptian wheat that, you know, you can see a lot of it standing still, but a lot of it's crushed. Um, so going to be wider that, food plots on the other side of it there, guys. So just kind of a piece of the puzzle. Remember that if you're looking to plant switch, know why you're planting it, know where you're planting it, for what reason, screening or densification interior of the property and always either add to that to make it stronger for whatever that reason is but keep your access plantings free of food meaning grains sorghum anything that they can reach right to eat you don't want that stuff in your screening on your access now this has got this here is egyptian wheat and sorghum because it lays right along the edge of the food plot so um i'm not walking past it it's just to make it it's just to make it more secure right for them it has nothing to do with my foot travel past it so switchgrass some screening topics in there guys hope you enjoyed this one switchgrass so what are you planning it for uh how to get there and uh how to get the best bang for your buck no pun intended thanks guys